Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught programmer. And in this video, what I actually wanted to talk about today is the best way to learn to code in 2020. And that's a really grandiose statement. I get it, I get it. But really what I wanted to help people with is those people who are just getting into learning to code. Maybe they're teaching themselves, maybe even you're going to school, maybe you've taken a few courses and you really wanna change careers. And this is the year you wanna do it. You have some New Year's resolution. And I really wanna share the best way that I know of going about that based on all the people I've worked with, all the people I've mentored and coached to get there. And I really wanted to help those of you avoid some of the problems that can come with it. So. In this video, I'll be covering that. Now, if you're wondering who I am, I'm Andy Sterkowitz, like I had said. Um, I actually taught myself how to code back in 2014. I landed my first job, I've been in that career. And now I actually mentor and coach people full-time to get their career started in programming. So this channel is all about strategies and tips to learn how to code and get your first job. So I highly recommend hitting the subscribe button below if you're interested in all that content, as well as hitting the bell icon to get notifications anytime I put out a new video. So with that being said, so what is it really that is the best way to learn how to code, right? The, the holy grail, if you will, how to learn how to code. So let me kind of lay out what I've seen most people try to do and how the approach can kind of go off the rails. So when you first learn that you can do this, you get really excited and you go out there and you buy every book on your Amazon recommended list that kind of resembles something that you want to learn, right? So maybe the programming language you want to learn. You go to your favorite course or tutorial site and you buy a bunch of 10 or 15 or $20 courses. Maybe you go to YouTube and find some free tutorials and you just soak up everything, right? And you love it. It's a lot of fun. You get to learn new things, especially if you're the type person who loves to learn. There's plenty of you to do in this. Now, that can be good for a short period of time, but after a while it becomes a problem and you get stuck in this sort of tutorial purgatory that I've actually talked about before. And it can be a real nightmare and you feel like you're doing a lot, you're learning a lot of cool concepts, but when, it come, when push comes to shove, you don't really feel like you can actually take that knowledge, all those concepts that you've learned and actually apply it to something. You have nothing to show for it. This is very comparable to somebody who, let's say you wanted to learn how to shoot a basketball like Stephen Curry. That'd be really fun, right? Be one of the best shooters in the world in terms of playing basketball. Well, the comparable thing would be if you want to shoot a basketball like him to read a bunch of books, like get every book at the library about shooting a basketball really well, maybe watching YouTube videos, maybe there's some coach or course out there that you could take and you could sit in your room and sort of imagine how to shoot a basketball. That'd be awesome, that'd be great. You could learn a ton, but at the end of that time, if you, if you, after three or four months, you haven't stepped in the gym and actually you know, shot a basketball, that can cause a lot of problems. It can cause a lot of fear about actually going to a gym. Maybe you're like so fearful of actually going to the gym because you could be really terrible at this, even despite reading all those books. Or you, know, you could have realized after all that time that maybe it was a waste of time to be reading and you could have been in the gym shooting. And this is very comparable to learning how to code because a lot of people will spend so much time learning that they're kind of scared to take that next step, which is to start a project on their own without the help of the tutorial. The tutorial is fantastic because it can show you new things. It can show you different approaches to coding. It can show you things that you didn't know, but when you're just sort of following along with an instructor early on, when you haven't built any projects on your own, when you get done, you'll feel a very big sort of dissatisfaction that you didn't really learn anything on your own. So you don't wanna be in this position where you are just sort of learning a lot but aren't applying it. And so my tip for you, the best way to learn how to code is really to have a project-based approach to learning. And if you've watched previous videos of mine, I've mentioned that you wanna have active learning and hands-on learning, and this is basically the same thing. So instead of thinking that you're gonna consume a bunch of information, you're gonna read every book possible, and that's gonna prepare you for uh, showing up on day one for your job interview, think about it as you wanna build as many projects as possible to really strengthen your programming skills, your knowledge, to really take what you have the concept and put it on paper, but even more than that, you wanna really hone your problem solving skills. The ability to problem solve, that's the key to being a programmer. And it's a very vague notion that people talk about a lot, but there's no real clear definition for what it is. And that's, so why, that's why many people who get into this they can't really, they don't quite understand. Like, how do I get to be a better problem solver? Like, give me the list of things that I need to know. That's what the people want to know. Give me the list of things in JavaScript or Python that I need to know to become a programmer, because that's easy. What's not easy is developing your problem solving skills. And the problem solving skills, if I could try to take a stab at it here, is really about how you go about solving problems or trying to get a result using a programming language or using code, right? So if you've got a problem, if there's something not working, or if you want some desired functionality from an application, 
how do you go about actually getting the functionality written, right? So that's problem solving. How do you take a large problem and break it down into smaller chunks and work your way through each part of that problem? Now that definition, for those of you who are just learning, probably makes no sense. You're like, I don't get it. But if you've been coding for a while and you've actually been building your own projects, it'll make a lot of sense because Look, here's the basic idea. If you have no reference experiences, meaning if you don't have these experiences of trying to build your own project, then a lot of the information will go right over your head. You'll be watching a tutorial, information will be coming at you, but it'll go right over you because you don't have the requisite experience to even retain a lot that's being told to you. So having the context of actually working with projects is really vital to making progress in this like you'll want to make. Now, for those of you guys who have heard me say this before, you probably might be thinking a couple of things. Number one, you're probably thinking is, okay, projects sound amazing, but I'm not sure what projects to build. I totally get it, that, but this is not really that valid of an excuse. Honestly, if you don't know what projects to build, go Google something, like find the simplest project that you can find and work your way through it. It could be as simple as anything you could possibly imagine. It's better to just start with simpler projects and move your way on to more and more complex projects than to sit there and throw your hands up in the air and say, you know what, I'm not sure what I should be doing. I'm just gonna watch tutorials. Now from there, you're probably wondering to yourself, well, how do I know what to include in these projects? Like, I wanna get a job someday, I wanna get a job as a front-end developer, back-end, whatever it is, full stack even. How do I know what to put into those projects so that a recruiter or that a software developer can reach out to me and actually hire me potentially? That's a really good question as well. The answer is if you don't have a mentor, if you don't know someone who's experienced in this, it's gonna be difficult. Like I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna have to do a lot of research, but I recommend that you just start with what you know and if you can network with people, if you can see what other people who have gotten jobs in this field or your desired field have done in terms of what their projects look like, what it included, that's the best bet. There's no perfect thing. If you can get someone who's in the field to help you out, it's gonna help you to create projects that are actually appropriate for the types of jobs that you'll be looking for. So really, there's no perfect project, okay? I know you'd like to think there's like five projects that you can build and you will get any job in the world. That's not true at all. What you wanna do is build projects that interest you, that keep your attention, that have some sort of challenging aspect to it, whether maybe it's the size or complexity of it, and make sure to complete it. That's what I've said from day one is you wanna make sure to complete those projects as well. Alrighty, so I hope this video has helped to give you a better strategy moving forward to really get yourself on the right track so you can really learn how to code in 2020. Now, if you have tried this or if you are going to try this, please leave a comment below and let me know how this has worked for you. If there's any questions that you guys have, also please leave a like. Other than that, guys, if you are looking for more content from me, I highly recommend joining my free Facebook group. You can uh, join that by going to the link in the description below. I'll actually include that there. Um, I just try to put out more content there. I try to do some live Q&A sessions. I try to keep spammers out of there, try to keep it as high quality as I possibly can. So I highly recommend joining that. Other than that, that's really all I've got. So thank you so much for watching, and as always, peace out.